You can have the worst day in the world and come out here in the pasture on the four-wheeler and uh, no cell phone service out here in the valley and, and look at your work, what you went through in the winter, look at those calves, see if you made a bad decision or a good decision on your certain mating you did. Uh, and then it gets a little quirky, but you're always wondering, is that bull calf going to, will he make the Denver pen? That's kind of the one show we really look forward to. Does he match up with him? We try, I try to put them together out here on the pasture and just in my head. It'll all change again about 50 times before we go, but it's always kind of the little goal or your own little uh, dreamland when you get out here and just enjoy this quiet and, and beautiful scenery. Well, we're in our what we call our uh, home pasture, which we call Barks. Beautiful southeast Minnesota. So you have a variety of climates and uh, temperatures and lots of different topography around the area. I mean, this is rolling, a lot of trees, creeks, and streams around here. Get west of here, it flattens out more corn and bean ground. But uh, southeast Minnesota is heavily populated with beef cattle, and you can see why the, the trees and rolling hills and grass, it's really suitable for raising beef. We got started with the Simital cattle through a 4 H project. There was a family nearby. Ironically enough, I'm longtime friends and with their youngest son of that family, and that's why we have Simital cattle to this day. And I was fortunate enough to, uh, after college, work for some very good young Simital breeders where I actually cut my teeth and learned a lot of life lessons. Uh, Simital and Sim Angus cattle for us fit very well. They're very adaptable like I said, to the wide range of climates. Ultimately, we're trying to produce these beef cattle, and I love raising beef cattle, and I want my Simital cattle to be beef cattle. I want to be able to produce and be profitable for our customers. We've got to be considering the end point in all these cattle, meaning their carcass merit, so we have a good eating experience for people, but at the same time, we want the cattle to look nice, um, have good udders, perform well, act well, and just want everything to be a real positive experience for everybody. That's one of my favorite two-year-olds right there, E50. She's kind of got checks all the boxes right there. Easy flushing, good udder, and raising a great big calf. I know what it's like to try to balance genetically high-quality animals that have got the data and have got the great EPDs and indexes into phenotypically correct animal. It's a very difficult thing to do, but uh, it gets us out of bed in the morning too. We really strive to, uh, to try to build that perfect beast. In our program, uh, generally focus a little more on the API as far as your index selection than TI, um, and that is due to our customer base. Um, in this area, we have what we call the slang term yard light farmer, uh, meaning a lot of people work off the farm. Example, principal at the school, math teacher at the school, they've got a small group of beef cows. But that API, you just have to read what it means, all-purpose index. That means these cattle can work for people in a lot of different situations. They can calve easy and they've got some maternal value and there's some disposition and stability built in there. If you put some focus on that and the physical traits that are needed, success is going to come your way. The beauty of Sim Angus cattle is you've got literally the best of both worlds. You've got all the science behind them and you've got the antagonistic traits of maternal and muscle. You put them together, that F1 is absolutely hard to beat. It's very enjoyable raising these beef cattle out here and as we progress with the genetics and the, all the advancements and everything from growing crops for feed to your DNA selection, the, the future is unlimited. <laughs>